Schoolboy charge remanded for pensioners murder. Two miners killed in mining pit collapse. Fire trigger workers protest Prime Minister's office over outstanding severance pay. And in sport, Guyana's Lady Jags entered the top 100 on the FIFA Women's World Ranking. These are the major stories that we're tracking this evening. I'm Sandy Rambutar with this our Tuesday, September 18th edition of News Update. Welcome and thanks for joining us. Two miners have been killed after an abundant mining pit in which they were raiding for raw coal collapsed in the Batara River. The dead miners have been identified as Dion Spotston, called Jersey Joe 36 in Mabaruma Northwest District, and of Lot 133 Monrepo East Coast Demarara, and an Aishalton Rupununi man, only identified as Sean. Police said about 20 hours yesterday, the men, along with several other persons, were in the abundant mining pit about 25 feet deep at Moatsi Bakdam, Kanawaka Bataro, when a large portion of the pit wall caved in and fell on them. The men were trapped under large stones and mud for more than two hours, after which their lifeless bodies were retrieved by several persons who went there to assist. The bodies are at the Madhya District Hospital awaiting post-mortem. Several persons who were operating in the pit at the time were questioned by investigators. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news on the other side of the break. Stay with us. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26 or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Why you minding me business? I noticed you yesterday, you're there watching, 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 watching. Today you're there here again. Why you minding me business? I fed up your nosy self. Yeah, baby, I just love your windows. Why are you bad eyeing me window? Like your house singer window? What kind of window really in your house? I got some old louvers windows that I need to change. Louvers! <laughs> Girl, I let you in for a secret, right? Peace and got a special deal right now. You go along there, you buy 10 window, you get a free bathroom window. Oh, for the love of God, try with them louvers window and go along to Peace and modernize. Peace and windows and doors, serving Guyana with the highest quality windows for your home, office, or commercial building. Did you know almost one third of deaths in Guyana are heart related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. 
just arrived at HomeSense Wholesale and Retail Farm Public Road, a wide design of PVC ceiling panels at the most affordable prices. So be sure to drop by. You can also catch deals on party items, baby care items, household items, footwear for ladies, gents and children, half a sacks, plastic chairs and tables, patio sets, carpets, fans, water dispensers, bicycles, trampolines, bouncy castles and much more. HomeSense Wholesale and Retail 31 Track A Farm East Bangamarara is your one-stop shop for everything you need. Telephone numbers 619-8502 or 638-6861. Former employees of the Ghana Sugar Corporation, Guy Suku, are forcing the government's hand to pay their deserved severance packages. The former workers protested in front of the office of the Prime Minister in Region 6, calling for the delivery of their entitlement. Some ex-workers from Skeldon and Rose Hall Sugar Estates today staged a picketing exercise outside of the Prime Minister's Region 6 office, Port Morant, demanding that the government settles the outstanding severance payments to them. The workers were all laid off in December 2017 and only half of their entitlement was given to them. While the government has promised to deliver the remainder of the severance, sometime in the second half of the year, the protesters have said they cannot wait until the government decides a date. As such, they aired their grievance by marching in front of PM Nagamoto's office. Some of the protesters shared the financial pressures of being laid off from Gaisuku. We need our severance to be paid because the time goes in and we now have no payment as yet. Half of the year gone half fast. And we need our money. If you give me a walk, what can I do? Many days too long I just tears. Because I can't find something to give me cheer on them. Because why? There's a lot of jobs that we can go and find. That we can go and seek from. You have to get a job that we people could live. We have to live. You have to get a walk that we can go on own. That when they up, you can't go and say, hey, we're going to block into the man door. When all the police are coming, when we get locked up, the police only want money. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister representative in Region 6, Gobin Harbajan, in trying to quell the protest, listened to the plight of the people and promised to relate their concerns to PM Nagamoto. But I had communicated this with the Prime Minister directly and um, he told me that, let me just you know, just give him a brief after the protest and he will look into this at the cabinet level at this time. Because uh, I, I, I will continue to update him and let him know what, what you know, transpire and what, what okay, you really had protest. Okay, because I know you yeah. come from, I see some region five people here, etc. So that, you know, I, 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 and the rain is coming. So it is your right to protest, but my job is to just take down the information and, and give it to the prime oh, minister, which he... With the, Following the government's decision to downsize the Guyana Sugar Corporation, Gaisoko, thousands of workers were laid off last December. At the time, the government made a decision to pay only half of the severance package in January and the other half sometime in the last six months of 2018. Those whose severance was $500,000 and less were given their entire package in January. The Guyana Agricultural and General Workers Union has taken the government to court to ensure the remainder of the severance is paid. Following the closure of Wales Sugar Factory, the workers who refused to accept to work at Eiflat Estate were denied any severance. This is despite they were writing their rejection as they are allowed to once they are being transferred to another estate that is more than 10 miles from the one they are working on. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. A 47-year-old man who was arrested for allegedly raping a 16-year-old Mocker House in Skin East Bank Demerara student died this morning while in police custody. A police report said that Stoney Henry, a well developed 539 Mocker House Scheme, was arrested yesterday and was seen vomiting about 6.15 hours in the East Rumfeld lockups by ranks on duty. When questioned, Henry complained of feeling unwell and was taken to the Church and Public Hospital where he died about two hours later. The body is at the hospital's mortuary awaiting postmortem. 
Harry, who allegedly raped the teenager back in May, was scheduled to appear in the Church and Magistrates Court. The Local Government Commission has made it categorically clear that a commission of inquiry into the affairs of City Hall is in no way a political ploy to advance any political party in the upcoming local government election. Do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of chairman and sole commissioner of the Commission of Inquiry looking into the administration and operation of the mayor and councillors of the city of Georgetown without fear or favor, affection or ill will, according to the best of my judgment and ability. Chairman of the One Man City Hall Commission of Inquiry, COI, taking the oath of office in front of the Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan. Following the presentation of the instrument of office, Justice Cecil Kennard, in exalting himself, mentioned that the government was searching for a suitable and capable person to head the commission. You don't go and pick up Tom, Dick, and Harry to do an inquiry. When an inquiry ought to be held, it has to be properly done. People who are capable of doing that, people who have tremendous experience. So that at the end of the day, whatever recommendations are made, it will be based on the evidence available. Backing up his statement, Deputy Chairman of the Local Government Commission, Andrew Garnett, made it clear that no political party will score points for the inquiry at the local government polls. There is no political interference, that there is no political influence, there is no political agenda. We are carrying out our mandate as constituted in the Local Government Commission Act, number 18 of 2013. The Commission of Inquiry has been launched into City Hall and will commence on September 24 and conclude on October 31. The COI was launched after numerous complaints were lodged at the Local Government Commission about the operation of City Hall. Complaints were also lodged alleging that the town clerk Royston King is mismanaging City Hall's resources. As such, he has been sent on administrative leave pending the end of the inquiry. City Hall has been cash-strapped for a number of years and owes the National Insurance Scheme and the Guyana Power and Light Incorporated millions of dollars. The MNCC is also at fault for not efficiently enforcing any penalty for property owners in the city who are defaulting their civil obligations, rates and taxes. City Hall is owed millions from them and has held tax amnesties over the past years, which raked in a few hundred million dollars, less than half of what is owed. Due to its limited finances, its projects have been moving at snail's pace. Godfrey Brooms, MTV. News update. Newly appointed Commissioner of Police Leslie James and Inspector General of the Ghana Defence Force Colonel Trevor Bowman have been conferred with national awards. The Department of Public Information said that the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, President David Granger, made a decision after consultations with the Chairman and members of the Advisory Council of the Orders of Guyana. He approved the conferral of the Discipline Services Star, DSS, on Commissioner James and the Military Service Medal on Colonel Bowman with effect from September 12, 2018. The Discipline Services Medal previously awarded to James was withdrawn. We tell you now that the number of Venezuelan refugees continue to increase in Barima Waini, Region 1, and Guyana's border regions with the Bolivarian Republic. Details in this report. Chairman of the region, Brett Nolashley, told this newscast that there is a steady increase of migrants into the region. Hyperinflation, power cuts, food and medicine shortages are driving millions of Venezuelans out of the country. Inflation is the biggest problem faced by the Bolivarian Republic. The inflation rate there is expected to meet a stunning 1,000% this year, putting it on par with Zimbabwe in 2000 and Germany in 1920. To aid in alleviating the situation, adequate food and medicine are provided to the migrants through the government and private sector. The fifth village, this is White Waters, one cans, two, Kamwat, three, Imateria, four, Smith Creek, five, Barbanova, six villages, six, nine to seven. If we calculate them by families, 
we will have um, like 168 families. Through the Civil Defence Commission, food supplies and equipment were handed to the migrants. A team from the Ministry of Public Health is also on the ground monitoring and providing health care to the refugees there. A plot of land was also given by a village councillor for temporary housing of the migrants in makeshift dwellings. Um, the, the lands were given primarily to put up their shelters, not to individual families or so, but so that they can be able to be settled away probably from the other um, the other villages. Um, they have started clearing, they've already cleared, some of them already started um, constructing by cutting the materials and so. Village councillors have also been tracking the presence of refugees on the ground to a certain increased number. The tracking registers will then be submitted to the Regional Democratic Council for record keeping and data management. More news after the break, stay with us. The secret is out. Tayo's Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs. Electrical and household appliances. Clothing. Cell phones and accessories. And much, much more. Me so much in this store. Tayo's Future Shop and Household Appliances, located at Ana Catarina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit! Now me know the secret! I'm like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody know the secret! <laughs> you can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick fit for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million dollars every day so feeling lucky then buy a daily millions ticket today remember a ticket today could make you rich today mark i'm in the kitchen <gasps> this is amazing i love your tile Make an impression with the finest styles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various styles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. The biggest single show in Guyana is here. Reality Vibes Entertainment presents me. My right. Guyana Edition. On 22nd of September, Lenora Stadium, West Coast Demerara. No fee to participate in show. Over 30 categories. Cake open. 6 p.m. Showtime 7 p.m. Ticket $500. Vehicle pass 1000 Pay more at the gate. Tickets and registration form available at Ali's and Sun. Kifland Mall and New Amsterdam. Fisher Toy Store. Sherry Street, Georgetown. Sans Pacific. East Coast Demerara. DJ Electronic. S. Internet World Cafe. Do it on West Coast Demerara. Registration form must be submitted before 3 p.m. 20th September. For info, contact 601. Nine one five one. This event is powered by. Whether you're building your dream home or an industrial building, Gafours has everything you need for your construction projects. Available are steel rods, high tensile and mild steel, BRC fabric, steel beams and columns, galvanized deckings, steel pipes, angles and channels, Z and C purlings available in four, six and eight inches, corrugated zinc sheets in six design profiles. Asphalt roofing shingles, the perfect concrete blocks in four and six inches, cement and stone. And to beautify your building, we stock a wide range of paints, machine tinted to match any color. Travel text in several shades, aluminium frame windows, curtain walls and doors. 
mixing steel doors and decorative panel doors. Also available are finishing products such as PVC ceiling panels, floor and wall tiles, gypsum, MDF and cement board, laminated and bamboo floor panels, and sinks, toilet sets and cupboards. So, for your next construction project, check out your one-stop shop, Gaffours, the name you can trust. Welcome back, you're watching MTV's News Update. Opposition leader Bharat Jagdeo says security of top officials of the former People's Progressive Party administration was never a reason for the establishment of the Pradaville 2 housing scheme at Sparindam East Coast Demarara. Here's more. Former Minister Robson Ben last week told reporters that he informed investigators that Pradoville 2 was built to ensure the security of the then President Bar Jagdeo and other members of his cabinet. However, Jagdeo, who also visited the Special Organized Crime Unit, Soku headquarters yesterday, as the probe into the sale of the land in the scheme continues, said the scheme was never built for security purposes. Jagdeo was invited for another round of questioning by Soku, which is currently investigating the sale and the transfer of lands at the Sparring Dam housing scheme, popularly known as Pradoville II. It is the government's contention that the lands in the scheme were sold extremely below market value to select individuals. Jagdeo told the reporters that he could have refused to accept the Soku's invitation, but he only did so to set a precedent for members of the current government, including President David Granger. Jagdeo reportedly refused to answer questions from the investigators and noted that his defense team will answer all of Soku's questions in the court. Court Free Brooms, MTV News Update. Travis Hazel, 31, also known as 50, has surrendered to police two days after he reportedly caused the death of a 49-year-old man named Leroy Barron. Barron, who was known for doing odd jobs at the Mackenzie Market Linen, died after he was severely beaten with a piece of wood by Hazel. A manhunt was launched for the suspect who hails from Silver City, Wismar, Linden. Police say Hazel turned himself in at the Mackenzie Police Station yesterday in the company of his mother. Hazel reportedly informed officers that he was advised by his lawyer of not answering any questions or give any statement. Charges are likely to be laid against Hazel shortly. Minister of Public Security Kamar Dramjitan says he has no plans to relax the current 2 a.m. curfew since he is convinced that domestic violence and accidents increase when alcohol is wantonly sold and consumed. Godfrey Brooms reports. Minister of Public Security Kamar Dramjitan placed a national curfew in 2015 instructing that all night spots, bars and lounges be closed at 2 a.m. The curfew was relaxed several times to usher in New Year's celebrations and for Ghana's independence celebrations. However, the minister will not be bending his curfew, affirming that the consumption of alcohol has a direct relation to domestic violence. But if we know the spike in domestic violence every Saturday morning and Monday morning after the drinking that is Friday afternoon and Saturday afternoon, and the accidents that happen, people will start to realize that we have to change this culture. While the minister is convinced about a direct correlation with the consumption of alcohol to domestic violence, no study has been done in Guyana to confirm or reject his belief. Meanwhile, Ramjatan noted that a survey was done which confirms the earliest drinking age and the drinking patterns of Guyanese and a household survey that proves that children in Guyana start drinking at the age of 11 and that we are, Guyanese, are the biggest binge drinkers in the entire Caribbean. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. Vendors will be permanently removed from the Luzaknan Market Tarmac and Grouping sections for the relocation to the Annadale Market. Here is more. Vendors plying their trade at the Luzaknan Market Tarmac will be relocated and merged with vendors at the Annadale Market.
This is to facilitate the ongoing construction of the east coast of Demarar four-lane road, which passes through the location where the market was located. The site at Annandale, which was constructed at a cost of $36 million, will accommodate 300 vendors. The expansion project runs from Better Hope to Annandale on the east coast of Demarar. The tarmac has been completed. We're just awaiting handover from the Ministry of Public Infrastructure and Communities and they have to market out the spots because we've, um, we've done a floor plan which we've submitted to them and it has 360 spaces marked out. Chairman of the Monrepo, La Reconnaissance, NDC, Ayub Mohammed. He said the tarmac will be covered with bitumen and concrete secure drains to comfortably accommodate the vendors. Each vendor will be allotted a spot measuring 5 by 6 feet. The, the first part is a car park, then there will be the haberdashery and then there will be the grocery and then you'll have the green section and further down at the back you will have the meat and fish and so on. So it won't be a problem or a nuisance to anybody. So obviously if someone wants fish or meat, then they have to go to the back of the market. As in any way, if you go to Starbrook Abode, it's the same uh, system. So the, 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 the complaint that is being floated that uh, they'll shop in front and not go down to the back. Well, they'll shop groceries in front, but they won't be able to get fish if they don't go down to the back. Vendors who ply the trade on a tarmac were given two months advance notice, alerting them of the removal. Kipanese Jordan joins us now with today's Tips for Healthy Living. Don't have time for intensive skin care? You can still pamper yourself by acing the basics. Good skin care and healthy lifestyle choices can help delay natural aging and prevent various skin problems. Get started with these five no-nonsense tips. 1. Protect yourself from the sun. One of the most important ways to take care of your skin is to protect it from the sun. A lifetime of sun exposure can cause wrinkles, age spots, and other skin problems, as well as increase the risk of skin cancer. For the most complete sun protection, use a broad-spectrum sunscreen with an SPF of at least 15. Apply sunscreen generously and reapply every two hours, or more often than if you're swimming or perspiring. Seek shade. Avoid the sun between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m when the sun's rays are the strongest. Wear protective clothing. Cover your skin with tightly woven long-sleeved shirts, long pants, and wide-brimmed hats. Second, don't smoke. Smoking makes your skin look older and contributes to wrinkles. Smoking narrows the tiny blood vessels in the outermost layers of the skin, in which decreases blood flow and makes skin paler. This also depletes the skin of oxygen and nutrients that are important to skin health. Smoking also damages collagen and elastin, the fibers that give your skin strength and elasticity. In addition, the repetitive facial expressions you make when smoking, such as pursing your lips when inhaling and squinting your eyes to keep out smoke, can contribute to wrinkles. Third, treat your skin gently. Daily cleansing and shaving can take a toll on your skin. To keep it gentle, limit bath time. Hot water and long showers or baths remove oils from your skin. Limit your bath or shower time and use warm rather than hot water. Avoid strong soaps. Strong soaps and detergents can strip oil from your skin. Instead, choose mild cleansers. Shave carefully. To protect and lubricate your skin, apply shaving cream, lotion, or gel before shaving. For the closest shave, use a clean, sharp razor. Shave in the direction the hair grows, not against it, and moisturize your skin. Fourth, eat a healthy diet. A healthy diet can help you look and feel your best. Eat plenty of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and lean proteins. The association between diet and acne isn't clear, but some research suggests that a diet rich in fish oil or fish oil supplements and low in unhealthy fats and processed or refined carbohydrates might promote younger looking skin. Drinking plenty of water helps keep your skin hydrated. And finally, manage stress. Uncontrolled stress can make your skin more sensitive and trigger acne breakouts and other skin problems. To encourage healthy skin and a healthy state of mind, take steps to manage your stress. Get enough sleep, set reasonable limits, scale back your to-do list, and make time to do things you enjoy. The results might be more dramatic than you expect.
Here is Chelsea Griffith with today's Court Rondo. On a day when he should have been celebrating his 15th birthday, a teenager of Buxton East Coast Demerara found himself behind bars after he was this morning remanded to prison after being charged with the murder of an elderly Annandale East Coast Demerara man. The teenager, whose name has been withheld by this newscast, appeared this morning before Coven John Magistrate Peter Hugh, where he was not required to plead to the charge which read that on August 27, he murdered 72-year-old Krishnachand Dabi during the furtherance of a robbery. Dabi's battered body was found in his lot 149 Annandale Public Road home on August 27, 2018 by his daughter. The man's daughter visited the home after several calls to her father's phone went unanswered. The man's house was also ransacked. The court session was not open to the public. The teen's grandmother and a relative of the deceased were also present. The pensioner's sister turned up at the court. The teenager was remanded to prison until October 8 when the case will be called at the Vigilance Magistrate's Court. He was arrested with another youth whom his grandmother said is a friend of his. The second suspect is slated to appear in the court shortly. The youth, along with four others, were previously charged for robbing a prison officer, but that matter has since been concluded. A 35-year-old drug trafficker, along with her alleged recruiter, were this morning charged before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan in relation to the recent drug bust at the Chadijagan International Airport. Shalon Barrow of Victoria Street, Alboystown, was nabbed by Custom Anti-Narcotics Unit officers while attempting to board a flight to Jamaica. The charge stated that Barrow on September 15 at the CJIA to Mary trafficked 1.638 kilograms of cocaine. Barrow was unrepresented and was remanded to prison until October 8. Meanwhile, Christy Griffith of Norton Street was arraigned for allegedly recruiting Barrow to traffic the cocaine between September 14 and 15, 2018 at the Sunset Hotel Kitty, Georgetown. Griffith was represented by attorney Tiffany Jeffers. The lawyer during an application for bail told the court that her client is a hairdresser and also the mother of three minor kids. The chief magistrate also remanded Griffith to prison until October 8. Cano officer Konyo Sandiford objected to bail being granted to both women. According to the facts, Barrow was arrested by Kano officers at the CJIA after it was discovered that she had cocaine in a false wall in her suitcase. Barrow had confessed to Kano officers and given detailed information about her recruiter Griffith. Two policemen this morning found themselves before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan in the Georgetown Magistrate's Court, charged for assaulting and wrongfully restraining a taxi driver. Assistant Superintendent of Police Mahindra Singh, 32, of Pike Street Kitty, was charged for wrongfully restraining Perry Barker on August 15, 2018, at the Coin Restaurant Bar and Pool Hall, Diamond Housing Scheme East Bank de Marara, and preventing him from leaving. Singh denied the allegation while his attorney, Bernard de Silva, made an application for bail which was granted in the sum of $20,000. The other accused, Corporal Christopher Damaraj, 33, who was also represented by De Silva, was charged for assaulting Barker on the same day and location. Damaraj pleaded not guilty to the charge and his attorney told the court that there is evidence that his client acted in self-defense. Damaraj was released on $20,000 bail. The two men will return to court on September 24. Chelsea Griffith reported for MTV's Court Roundup. Coming up after the break, MTV's sports update and more. Stay with us. Are you building or renovating? Then Gaffers is the place to shop for all your construction needs. Our flat pack department has a wide range of doors, including wooden doors in pine, purple heart, crabwood, bifold, arch, full and half French, fiberglass garage doors, and Mexin steel doors. Our Mexin doors are durable, and they're available in a wide range of designs. For safety, our doors include 12 locks, viewers, buzzers, and frames. For your kitchen, we have a wide range of elegant and durable quartz, granite and laminated countertops, and cabinet doors. You'll find laminated, bamboo, and PVC flooring to suit your style and decor while upgrading the entire look and feel of any room. Then choose from our wide selection of PVC ceiling panels, ceiling tiles, moldings and rosettes. Also built in our flat pack department is sheeting for interior and exterior use such as plywood, gypsum board, cement board and MDF board. So come on down to Gafu's flat pack department for your construction and finishing needs and Miss Camlo will assist you to select products for your total satisfaction. Gafu's, the name you can trust.
keeping homes safe across the Caribbean for decades. BOP has become the most trusted name in insecticide. There has never been, or there never will be, any escape for insects from the unrelenting power of BOP. Formulated with precision, BOP effectively eliminates all flying and crawling insects that seek to invade your home. Trust BOP, the number one insecticide brand in the Caribbean, to keep everyone that matters to you safe. Distributed by Desinco Limited. Introducing the new Softex toilet tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice is clear. Choose Softex toilet tissue. Super soft and super durable. Guaranteed. Let FiberTech help you to renovate, refresh, and redecorate your kitchen. Spice up your kitchen with decorative colors, finishes, and accessories. Choose from an array of designs and beautiful granite colors that are blended to suit your choice. FiberTech Lifetime Kitchen is durable, thermite-free, and water-resistant. Enjoy one-year factory warranty along with our after-sale service. So come on in and let us help you choose wisely. The biggest single show in Guyana is here. Royalty Vibes Entertainment presents me. All right. Guyana Edition. On 22nd of September, Lenora Stadium, West Coast Devarara. No fee to participate in show. Over 30 categories. Cake open. 6 p.m. Showtime, 7 p.m. Ticket $500. Vehicle price, 1000 Pay more at the gate. Tickets and registration form available at Ali's and Sun. Kifland Mall and New Amsterdam. Fisher Toy Store. Sheryl Street, Georgetown. Trans Pacific, East Coast Demerara. DJ Electronic, Essie Internet World Cafe. Do it on West Coast Demerara. Registration form must be submitted before 3 p.m. 20th. September for info contact 601 9151. This event is powered by Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc., Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable, integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG. The best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome to MTV's Sports Update. The senior women's football team, commonly known as the Lady Jags, has moved 35 places up on the FIFA Women's World Ranking to 83, entering the top 100 bracket of countries in the world. This movement results in the team being placed eight among the CONCACAF member associations and fourth in the Caribbean Football Union CFU, following the relaunch of the program in 2017. Online news site Newsroom quoted head coach of the Lady Jags, Dr. Ivan Joseph, as saying this is a first step in a continuous effort to raise the bar in women's football. Meanwhile, the International Women's Coordinator and Coordinator of the International Supporters Group, ISG, Paul Beresford, noted that this new ranking is an achievement of the targets established by the ISG, that is achieving up the top 100 in the FIFA rankings, top 10 in CONCACAF and top 5 in the CFU, respectively. Since the relaunch of the women's program, the Lady Jags were engaged competitively in two tournaments, the CFU Women's Challenge Series and the CONCACAF Caribbean Women's Qualifiers. The team placed third in the CFU Women's Challenge Series in March and tied nil all with Barbados in May 2018 in their final qualifier match of the tournament in the latter tournament. The 7th Annual Courts U19 PB Tournament was launched today with Courts Guyana presenting a number of footballs and a check for $4 million to the Petro Organization. The launch of the 7th Annual Courts Under-11 PB Tournament was held today at the National Library in collaboration with Petro Organization and Banks DIH. 
The tournament has been endorsed by the Ministry of Education and speaking on behalf of the Ministry, the head of the Physical Education Department, Mr. Nicholas Fraser, mentioned that the tournament is an important and needed format that should be continued throughout the country. But it's also important to note the format uh, that the competition has, which allows teams to continually be active throughout the tournament. And um, in, in terms of how we learn, that is important. Uh, to be able to have a failure and to bounce back and to come back the following week and continue playing. So it's, it's a very good format and I think that's also something else that um, could lead in terms of examples of how uh, other tournaments could be run. Reflecting on what the company has done for Petra, co-director of Petra, Troy Mendonca, said Courts has been on board of the tournament for some seven years. Mendonca highlighted the impact the furniture giant has had on the tournament and sports as a whole. As a matter of fact, without Courts, I don't think as a co-director of this organization I would have been here today. They're the ones that call upon us at that point in time, six, seven years ago. We um, were ex-members uh, of the Guyana Georgian Football Association. And during that time, we did courts for two years at the club level. And the third year, they called us and they said, you know, they want to do this competition because I think they understand that the role that they were playing in the livelihood of these youngsters. And because of that, there was the board of the Petra organization. Managing Director of Court, Clyde De Haas, said that after the years they are not disappointed with the results they have received from this tournament. It's again uh, the start of the year that uh, I'm very proud to stand here. Um, at uh, the launch of another PUE competition and um, as a company we are very proud that uh, we are uh, associated with this competition and that we can contribute uh, in, in a small way uh, to part entertainment for our children Brand manager of Banks DIH, Clayton McKenzie, expressed elation at being on board of the Under-11 tournament. Banks DIH is once again very pleased to be embarked in such a spectacular event of the PV Under-11 football competition. And seven years, seven years is quite a number of years we've been in support of this program. Over the period of time going to these um, on the 11th PV competition, I've seen phenomenal performance from these children. They are actually gifted. They play high level of football. The tournament starts on September 29. Chelsea Griffith reported for MTV's Sports Update. Ben Stokes and Alex Hales have been charged with bringing the game into disrepute by the England and Wales Cricket Board following an incident outside a Bristol nightclub. The Independent Cricket Discipline Commission CDC hearing will be held on December 5 and 7. All around the Stokes 27 denied a charge of affair assaulting from the September 2017 incident and was found not guilty in August. Batsman Hales 29 was not charged. The CDC hearing will be held in private by a three man panel chaired by former Desirbara cricketer Tim Gordon. It takes place between England's winter stores, the Sri Lanka and West Indies. England will play three tests, five one internationals and a T20 international in Sri Lanka in October and November. They will then tour the West Indies from mid-January to early March. Stokes and Limited Overs Batsman Hales have been charged with two counts of bridging an ECD directive which states. The Ghana Rugby Football Union has named the 12-man squad for the Rugby American Nerd Sevens Championship in Barbados this month to qualify for the 2019 Panam Games in Peru. The Ghana Rugby Football Union today was presented an undisclosed sum of money by the Edward B. Bahari and Company to offset expenses for the Rugby American North RAN Sevens Championship in Barbados. 
Brands manager of Edward Beebe Harry and Company, Monique Tiwari, expressed elation towards being on board for another year with the GRFU. Edward Beebe Harry and Company Limited is proud to be a sponsor of the Guyana rugby football team. We are proud to contribute towards the nurturing of young rugby talents in Guyana, and this is our way of giving back. Edward Beebe Harry and Company Limited <coughs> wishes the team success in the upcoming Caribbean Championship Tournament in Barbados. President of the GRFU, Peter Green, said the company has provided him a private mandate in relation to introducing a women's rugby team. He added that the union is expecting an exciting and much improved performance in the RAND 7 championships, which will allow them to qualify for the 2019 Panam Games in Peru. Guyana has won the NACA championships seven times. Of lately, our nemesis has been Jamaica. Understandably, Jamaica purely overseas based players. And now they've added one more player, Warren Wire, he's a 2012 bronze medalist in the Olympics. But we're not afraid of that. Someone asked me, what are we going to do about that? I told them, we run faster. Captain of the Sevens team, Dwayne Schroeder, added that the team has gained a different mindset after their encounter defeats in Colombia this year. Well, starting with preparation from home, well, we started in camp, getting our mindset, you know, after having two losses in Mexico, which we set out to do well, but however we didn't do well. So going into this tournament day is a tough task of us, on us already. We already have the critics to deal with, the media to deal with. So moving into Barbados is going to be a tough challenge. Beating Jamaica, losing to Jamaica in Colombia, was a hard loss since we think it was a revenge match we are going for after losing to them in 2017. The Guyana squad includes Dwayne Schroeder, Avery Corbin, Valen Adams, Rick Ford Cummings, Richard Staglon, Ronald Mayers, also McKenzie, Lance Lotadonis, Jamal Ruggas, Clandis Butts, Riyad Hamilton, and Patrick King. Chelsea Griffith reported for MTV's Sports Update. And finally in sport, a homeless man has been charged with the murder of prominent Spanish golfer Celia Barquin, Arozomini, 22, who was found dead on an Iowa golf course. Ms. Barquin won the European Ladies Amateur Championship in July and was a top athlete at Iowa State University. She was found on Monday at the Coldwater Golf Links in the city of Erms with several stab wounds to her head, neck and upper body, police say. Ms. Barquin is the second female student in Iowa to be killed in recent months. Police in the Iowa City said they have determined that Ms. Barquin died following an assault. Colin Daniel Richards, also 22, has been charged with first degree murder police say he was ordered to be jailed on Tuesday. Stay with us, more news after the break. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. In the region, Video Venezuela's President Nicolas Maduro eating in an upscale Stoke restaurant in Turkey has caused outrage at crisis hit Venezuela. The images show Turkish celebrity Jeff Nostret Gostri, also known as Salt Babe, carving meat in front of the President and his wife Celia Flores at Gorky's Narset restaurant in Istanbul. Almost two-thirds of Venezuelans have reported losing weight as shortages of food worsened in recent years. Red meat is especially scarce. Chef Chesnos Gorsi posted three videos of Mr. Maduro's visit on Instagram but has since deleted them. But many social media users reposted the video. And internationally, German's domestic intelligence chief Hans Grog Massen has been told to quit and move to a senior post at the Interior Ministry. The government decision came amid a row over Mr. Manson's response to far-right unrest in Chimas, eastern Germany. Anti-migrants hunts were reported on August 26 after a German man was killed in a probe with migrants. Mr. Merson doubted that foreign-looking people had been hunted. Chancellor Angela Merkel was urged to sack him. 
Critics said his skepticism downplayed seriousness of far-right violence and intimidation in chess myths. Mr. Mason will leave the BF3 spy service and become a state secretary in the interior ministry. Chairman Media reported he will actually move to a higher pay grade. It is not yet clear who will replace him. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. Now let's take a look at the Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 791. Let's turn our attention to the Demer Harbour Bridge and Barbies River Bridge schedules. And that's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. Schoolboy charge remanded for pensioners more than two minors killed in mining pit collapse. Fire trigger workers protest Prime Minister's office of outstanding servants' pay. And in sport, Ghana's Lady Jags is in the top 100 on the FIFA Women's World Cup ranking. Catch our rebroadcast at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.